Hello, I'm Dave and this is Fiverr, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Sort of, I'll explain shortly. We're at Exbury Gardens in the New Forest. It's about two or three miles to the southeast of Bewley, across the Bewley River from Buckler's Hard, as I said, in the New Forest. Now my normal companion Logan is having a day off, he's at home on the sofa so that's why Fiverr's with me today. Now dogs are allowed at uh, Exbury Gardens but uh, you have to keep them on the lead. The sun is out, it's a glorious spring day so do come and join us on a little wander through the gardens. Well Exbury Gardens is a 200 acre informal woodland garden with large collections of rhododendrons, azaleas and camellias, often considered the finest garden of its kind in the UK. Well, before we kick on and have a look around, let me tell you a little bit about the history of the gardens themselves. Lionel Nathan de Rothschild, the banker and conservative MP, bought the Exbury estate in 1919 and soon started creating a garden. I think the whole estate was something like 2,600 acres. 150 men and 60 trained gardeners were employed to lay paths and manage planting. 22 miles of irrigation pipes were laid and two acres of greenhouses put up and something like a million plants introduced. Exbury Village itself was expanded to house the workforce and a water tower and two electric generators were installed to supply the village with water and bring electricity to the manor house and greenhouses. The gardens were first opened to the public in the 1930s. Well sadly Lionel died suddenly in 1942 at the age of 60 and it was left to his son Edmund who, after the war, set about rolling back the years of inevitable dereliction of the gardens. It had been requisitioned by the Admiralty in the war and then became a training base known as HMS Hawke and then HMS King Alfred. Indeed, it didn't formally get returned back to the family until 1955. Edmund died in 2009 at the age of 93. But since 1988 it's been run by Exbury Gardens Limited, which I think is a charitable trust, which in turn occupies a long lease from the freeholders who I think are the Rothschild Family Charitable Trust. Looks like we're going through the rock garden here, of course with the sunshine. So we're right at the end of April, actually on the bank holiday, Saturday. So the sunshine really bringing out the colours in some of these flowers now. And the birds twittering away. This really is quite splendid. And uh, even though obviously it's going to be quite busy today, there are parts of the garden that are quite peaceful. Here, there are so many little nooks and crannies. Lovely, you feel as though you're exploring and some nice little shaded areas as well. So, if on a very, very hot day, you can cool down.
and uh, loads of easy access paths as well. So no mud. <laughs> Right, so we've got a choice here. We can go to the right on the easy route, and I'm guessing that on the left is the hard route. Should we do the hard route, uh, Fiver? <laughs> it doesn't look too bad. Pull your old dad up. Up we go. Now, are my knee's going to regret this. That uh, wasn't too bad. A nice little bench to look back. Oh, the bees are out enjoying these flowers, that's for sure. Oh, wow, look at these. Now, according to my little map that they give you <laughs> at the entrance, I think these are, are mirror ponds. Gorgeous reflections. This is Perfect day to, to come. got to be careful here. We can't cross over the little railway line just yet because I can hear a little steam engine coming. We're going to be having a go on this later on. We've got tickets for it. Ooh. <laughs> and here it comes. <laughs> Fiber's never been on a steam train before so that should be fun later on. <laughs> the rhododendron line. <laughs> well, just a little bit more of the railway track there. Exbury North. And the track bears off to the right, but we're going to carry on with our wander through the gardens to the left. So what's great about this place, there's loads of these little maps as you go around telling you where you are. So there's no way you're going to get lost, <laughs> hopefully. Well, folks, we look at the size of this. This is a uh, Monterey pine from California. At least that's what it says on the little signpost in front of it. But it keeps going and going. <laughs> How many squirrels do you reckon are in there, Fiverr? <laughs> Another wow. Gorgeous a little waterfall there and another pond. I think this is called the, the Jubilee Pond. So peaceful. Look at the way there. What is that? Some sort of willow with the branches dangling in the water. I'll tell you what, I had no idea this place was so big. You could spend hours in here. I think the ticket price was £16.50 for an adult. That sounded like a good value for money for me. And I think it's £6 extra if you want to have a ride on the train. But, uh, it's incredible. I was reading that back in 1976, when of course we had the great drought, they lost nearly a third of the plants here. So great to see that it uh, is flourishing today. another pit stop for another one of these ponds. 
a bit of a sort of green foliage in the water itself, but I just love the, the shadows that you get from the trees on the water. Well, we're continuing to make our way southwards through the gardens. Another quite delightful pond. This one looks like it's full of water lilies. But the landscaping around here is uh, really is quite splendid. And there's a, a nice bench just to my left. I think we might sit there for a while and contemplate. One of those days when I'm glad we brought some water with us. He's just checking to make sure there's no squirrels and then back to uh, back to drinking. <laughs> and this is Exbury House, which is actually a private part of the gardens. There were records of a manor actor Exbury in the 13th century and the core of the house today dates from the 18th century it was remodelled and expanded in 1919 and renovated again in 1989 and reoccupied by, well, I guess, the Rothschild family. I'm not 100% sure. We just noticed uh, not far from the house in the gardens, there's this whopping great big bell dangling underneath a tree. I wonder what the story is of that. Well, there's so much history attached to Exbury, and I was reading that back in the Second World War, around about the time they were preparing for D-Day, there were a number of high-level meetings here, particularly uh, engineers. Uh, they were trying to come up with plans for building the temporary mulberry harbours that were used on the north coast of France. And they had a lot of their meetings outside in the gardens, and they were trying to come up with an idea for the name of the plan. And as they were sitting underneath a mulberry tree, one chap piped up and said, well, why don't we call them mulberry harbours? <laughs> now, whether it's a true story, I don't know, but certainly that's the legend. Well, folks, every five minutes or so, you just have to stop and take some of these colours in. They're beautiful. I'm running out of words to describe them. Well, we're now heading towards the southern end of the gardens and over in the distance there is the, the Bewley River. And on the other side, well, it's behind those trees actually, is Buckler's Hard. We might see that later on. Of course, Logan and I did a walk oh, about three years ago from Bewley to Buckler's Hard. Now, that's a tree I do recognise, a monkey puzzle tree. Well, it's fascinating things, aren't they? Incredible uh, shapes on the branches. Well, another waterfall. And this one's got very much a sort of stepping stone aspect to it, coming down from above. Well, a better view of the Bewley River here. And the river itself, from memory, it's something like 12 miles long. And it's tidal for the first sort of four, four and a half miles to Bewley Village to my right. In fact, later on this summer, Logan and I are going to do a walk along the entire length of the Bewley River from Bewley right to its source uh, at Lyndhurst. 
Well, this is as about far south west as we're going to get in the gardens and there's a plaque here uh, in commemoration of uh, sailors and Royal Marines of the British Navy who manned the landing ships and landing craft of course lost their lives during the liberation of Europe in 1944. And what a beautiful spot to sit at one of these benches and just to look out onto the Bewley River. <laughs> nice yes, they all seem to a bunch of sight hounds <laughs> sniff each other. Yeah. <laughs> well, folks, this is the bit that I've been looking forward to most of all the trip on the steam railway line. So, lovely. Good boy. Yeah, this way. This way. Yeah, are we? we going to go on? There we go on. There we go. There we go. There we go. I'll put it in one with the doors. Oh, lovely. <laughs> we got our special one there. Oh, well done. Thank you very much. Okay, All right, it? okay. Here we go. Good boy. Up. I'll go first then. Oh, go fiver. Good boy. Ah, oh. there we go. Check your carriage. Is it uh, suitable for you, sir? You're going to get a good view from here. <laughs> it's your first time on a steam train. What do you reckon? <laughs> well, folks, we're on board. And the chat with the flag is just about a wave, nearly ready to go. Go through a tunnel next.
gentle sound of steam is enough to send your dog to sleep. This way. Well, I think Fiverr enjoyed that. I certainly did. Time for a cup of tea. Well, I was just going to have a cup of tea, but oh, it looks so appetising, that quiche. It would have been rude not to. <laughs> well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.